Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm back. It's the next day, but I can't wait to paint these. I painted a bunch of pumpkins last night, but I didn't film. Anywho, I am doing a design by Plum Purdy. I've, mu I've made some pins, and these are magnets. This is a free downloadable pattern. Uh, from Renee Mullins. Purdy Pumpkins. You go to plumpurdy.com and I will put the link in the description so you can paint along with me. In the previous video I shared how I prepped the piece and now in this video we're going to get to work on the details. I am so excited. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we are going to shade the inside curves and the outside curves to give it that kind of pumpkin-y look. And I'm going to use some, um, I think I was using, I, I didn't have ox blood, so I'm using rook wood in replace. Now, just with, use what you have. Um, it just needs to be dark enough that you can sh see the shading, uh, see the color. I'm using an angle brush, and we're going to be floating. And floating, oops, wait a minute, I need my palette paper. Floating is a technique that... I use in all my painting projects. It's a decorative painting technique in order for you to get a variation in color from dark to light to water. So let me show you. I gotta move all these little guys out of the way. Okay. So we're gonna go into the water first. And I will zoom in just for a brief moment. Go into water. Get your brush, the bristles saturated. This is a half inch angle brush, Sure Touch by Joe Sonia. And then you're gonna blot so it's not drippy. I'm gonna corner load so I just take a little bit of the paint onto the corner of my brush and then I'm gonna work it into my palette. This is called a paper palette. It's just waxy like, um, I think I got this one at like a clearance place. But anyway, you wanna work the paint into the brush so that you get a graduation of color and you're literally floating the paint on the water. So I put it down and I start to push the paint across the bristles. I never want the paint to reach all the way to the end. I want it to be paint, uh, paint and water and then just water on the other end. And this is considered to be a float. Now, when I put mine down, and I'm not drawing any lines, I'm just gonna wing it, but I'm gonna reload, I'm gonna show you again. So I go from water, let me come down a little. Lot, corner load, so I go, and then I put the paint down, all the bristles are on the surface of this paper. I'm not just using the tip, I need to have all, everything, now that looks kinda wet, it's a little bubbly, you can all, kind of dab it. Now I've got a good float. And I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up all the bristles on the surface and just pull up the piece. I pity pad a little bit. And that's it. You can use your mop and I'm a mopper. Now the mop stays dry but that looked a little too liney for me you tickle the water edge of your float and kind of pull the paint out into the water that I left on the piece because if there's water on my brush I'm gonna put the water down on the piece so I'm just gonna flip it around I'm going to do that again this is the dip so the front of the pumpkin is the rounded part and then it goes in and then that'll go out again so anyway I'm gonna go water blot corner load and go right back to that same area a little bit more paint. The other thing is you can go back as many times as it takes to get the desired darkness. And I always say I'm a heavy hand because I am impatient. I'm learning that about myself. And I'm a one and done. I want to just, I'm too fast. So I'm just going to breathe. I just went for, I walked the dog so I want to calm down. And just be in the moment with the process. <laughs> Okay, Kirby wanted to say that. Anyhow, I'm going to start at the bottom this time. All the bristles on the surface. Because I need the water too, not just the paint. And I'm just kind of swerving it a little. 
that looks good I'm just going to leave it let it dry but my, what I was getting at is if I didn't put that much paint on my first float I could let it dry and come back and do it again you can build up the color the mop brush is also so that you can pull it out nice and wide and then my next one if I use the darker darker color you can anyway this is a cutesy piece and we're not doing that <coughs> <coughs> all right the other thing I'm gonna do is highlight so I'm gonna get out I think it's tangerine let me just make sure yeah tangerine and I happen to have that so I am using tangerine and we're gonna go on the opposite side of the float of the um, shade and we're gonna pop up the bright parts I'm not, I don't have words today I'm a little anywho same thing I'm doing the same thing I'm gonna water blot on my paper towel corner load on on the brush so I have a little tangerine and then I'm gonna work that out on my palette I have water all over my ferrule it'll drip down and make the brush wetter but the idea is to kind of whatever's happening here is what I'm gonna get there so work it out over here and once you like what you're seeing and feeling take it to the piece we're gonna go all the way out I want to make sure I'm starting on the dry side I don't want to go over and pull off what I put down the outside edge then I'm gonna reload I probably have enough water but I'm gonna go back water blot the key is to have enough water in your brush if you're not able to make it across you don't have enough water in the brush that's what gives it your slipperiness so I'm gonna go up butt up against that rookwood that I use I think I use rookwood flip it and do the same thing but look at that it's just a little highlight so water corner load go up against the outside edge first and see I'm a heavy hand I want it to be nice and bright and do the same thing on this side of the oops I got it on my stem which always have a q-tip handy because just this paint will come right off if you make a mistake you can just wipe it off with a q-tip and this is really bright up here so I'm just gonna tap it but see I have a q-tip and just dip it in the water and I'll just get it off that little stem or highlight it I want to let it dry I could be popping this color on a couple of these pins I have a bunch of pins that I'm doing um, you know one thing I forgot to do I want to do a wash of burnt umber so I'm just gonna do that while the um, <clears throat> the stem is base coated in plantation pine and then she said to put a wash of burnt umber over it so I'm just gonna take this little flat brush it's really small what is this a number four put some water and then just pull I didn't blot first and I pull from that puddle and make a wash so a wash is way more water than it is um, paint so I just went and got more water and I'm just gonna go over the stem hopefully I'm in the shot And I'm kind of doing it in an up and down so that it kind of has a stemmy look to it. I'm just going to put it here because I have so much paint on my brush. I have a lot of these little pumpkins I could do. And that's it. That's going to be all we're doing for the stem. I've really enjoyed painting. I've been painting for the past couple days. I cleaned my craft room so that it wasn't cluttered. I reorganized my mosaic stuff and yeah it just feels good in here. All right I think that's it. Oh I have one more one little straggler. All right. <coughs> The next thing we're going to do is some cheeks. 
And for cheeks, I'm going to use uh, these brushes, the Lunar Blender. And this is, these you can get at Michael's. These are dry brushes that I got from, um, oh man, I can't think of her name. I can picture her, I can hear her voice. But she just, she uses these for everything. She's a dry brusher. She's on my Facebook. She does lives. OMG, her painting is gorgeous. Damn it. I'll put it in the description. But I'm going to give him some cheeks. Let me just make sure. Uh, dry brush the cheeks with True Red. And I happen to have that, so I'm going to use this as primary. Come on, where are you? Here it is. Now, dry brush is what it says. I want my brush to be dry. So I'm going to use a dry paper towel. I'm going to get a new one so that I don't have any water. And I'm going to load the brush, and then I'm going to wipe off all the paint. So here's this. This is the, the thing. you. I haven't put this in water. I want to keep it dry. Just dip the tip in, and then kind of pounce it on my palette. So I'm loading it this way. And these bristles are much stiffer than, your, than the other brushes, so don't worry. Then I'm wiping it off. Wipe it off and then scrub it off. You don't want any wetness. So the paint is on there, but it's not wet. There we go. Now I'm gonna scrub in a couple of cheeks. I'm doing this guy, but the cheeks are kind of just up in the center over here. Just gently. And it's going to be subtle on camera, but in person you can really see it. It's so cute. And let's just say thank you, Renee, for your whimsical designs, for your freebies. Uh-oh. See, I think I'm, I'm scrubbing a hole a little bit. It'll be okay. But I think my the, sh the shading color underneath was a little wet still because it shouldn't come out. It shouldn't be like that, it should be solid. So, let me just make sure my brush is totally dry. And we're gonna put his little face, oh, you know what, I forgot one step though. I'm glad, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I've painted several because now I know what I need to do. Real quick, I'm just gonna leave that, but we're gonna do a float along the top and bottom to just kind of, make the finish the shape of the pumpkin so I'm going into the rookwood again so the color that we did the shading with and I'm gonna go just along the top and the bottom so right here and then at the top Oops, see, this is still a little wet. I would be taking my time if I wasn't filming, but I don't want this to take forever. So that's what we have so far. Now I'm going to put his little face on. So we just dry brush the cheeks, then we're going to put his little face on. Now, you can do this by tracing. I'm going to do this guy. You could trace this onto tracing paper. Let me come up a little bit. And then, ugh, dogs, put it on top and use graphite paper and a stylus to trace your, to trace the lines on. But I'm just going to do it with a pencil, very gently. Um, so I just have it right next to here. And just eyeball it. He has a triangular nose. It's just rounded triangle. You're not going to be able to see this, but I, I can see it. So I'm going to just put a little triangle right here, very gently. And then I'm going to put the eyes. need to put the eyeballs because I'm gonna base coat the whole thing and then he gets three teeth I'm actually I'm not even gonna put the teeth on because I can just freehand it oops anyway 
I kind of scratched it. All right, that's all I need. I'm going to just show you the quick and easy way, and I'm going to put in those eyeballs real quick. This is just a little flat brush, and I'm going to use buttermilk. And we'll put those eyes. The whites are going to need a couple coats. So while I'm waiting for this coat to dry, I'll do other stuff. But I'm just going to base coat in this eye, the white of his eye. Um, the other fun part of this project is I ended up using a gold leafing pen to put on the side of the piece. Like I put the gold leafing pen along the edge so that it like finishes it off. But Renee also has us using a Pigma um, Micron Pigma pen to do some liney work, some details. So it's kind of fun when you can use other media besides paint. And since we're so crafty, all of us have all these things. I hadn't used my Microns in so long. It's always fun for me. And then I also took some raffia or some whatever this stuff is called, some twine that I'm tying around the top of the pumpkin just to add a little something. All right, so this is going to take a couple coats just to get solid. And before I do that, I want to let that dry. I'm going to says shade around the outside of the eyes with a brush mix of heritage brick and burnt umber and I think you could just use the rookwood but because I had heritage brick I decided to well it's should be here somewhere here right here I just got it um, I decided to use it because I had it so I'm gonna do a brush mix just mix it on my brush literally I'm using my flat All right, I'm gonna do this when I get back. Okay, I'm back. I'm gonna shade, a, I already put a second coat on the pupils, the buttermilk, but I'm gonna shade around the eye. I'm gonna put a little more burnt umber out. Um, with a mix, a brush mix of, what is, it, what is it called? Heritage Brick and Burnt Umber. Floated, so I'm water blot, a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of heritage brick and see all that water I hope you can Oop, and I splashed my little pumpkin um, brush mixing just I'm gonna go back a little bit more burnt umber a little bit more heritage brick and plenty of water and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna float I'm gonna put let me come down so you can see I put the chisel edge of the brush up against the nose and then I just pivot. I keep pivoting and turning. I turn the piece and I turn my brush and then I just oh, I think Matthew's calling me but I could have gone all the way around but I'm just gonna wait and I'm gonna put it again right here And if I get it on the white, I'll touch it up. Yeah, I kind of got it on the white a little bit. And then... And that kind of just sets the eyes onto the pumpkin. I hope I was in the shot. Sometimes when I zoom, I zoom, I say it all the time, but I, I come out of the shot because I'm so focused on what I'm doing. But that's done. Now I'm just going to touch up um, the buttermilk so I can uh, move on to the pupils so we'll get some black out so I just want to touch it up am I in the shot okay good there I just got a little over the line and I do like the white it's it's actually not white white but um, you know what, before we put the pupil on, let me follow her directions. Paint the eyes with buttermilk and the pupils with black. Shade around the outside of the eyes with a brush mix of heritage brick and burnt umber. Um, and then it talks about the lids of the eyes. We're not doing lids. The teeth are buttermilk, so I'm going to put them on right now. I'm doing this guy. I'm going to use a flat brush and just let the brush do the work. So this is a number four short touch flat. And I'm going to load the brush and the buttermilk which is right there 
this was because I left and I came back it got uh, the puddle still wet underneath but I'm loading the brush and now I'm gonna go and pull these teeth you know what I'm gonna turn it over this is what I like to do sometimes it just gives me perspective like I don't know I can't explain it but since I'm pulling the teeth up I can get a better idea so I'm gonna put this one right here I'll do two coats on it but that's one I'm gonna put one here two and then I'll put one right here and I'll let them dry but see how easy the brush did the work for me and then I was able to get a good shape and I'm done All right what we're gonna do is this the nose so I'm gonna put a little bit of and she uses a different color red for this than the um, cheek color but if all you have is the cheek color which I think was called true red this is called primary red and we're gonna take a little bit and I have it so I'm gonna use it but I'm putting I don't have a lot but I'm gonna put a little dab out because you only need a tiny bit and I'm gonna float this on the inside edge so like I just went around the outside of the eye I'm gonna go on the inside let me go down a size because I'm just such a heavy hand I have a smaller line um, a smaller angle brush so I go into water blot I'm corner loading just like we've been doing and I'm putting some of this primary red and you're gonna go down so I'm starting with the chisel edge of the brush and I'm gonna pull it down the left side and leave it there hopefully you can see that it's subtle but and I'm just gonna wait because I I could do the other side but there's a chance I could take that off so while I'm waiting for that to dry I'll just go back and do the teeth again do another coat on those teeth and that's why I like to do assembly line because I can do several of these pumpkins at a time like for a craft fair or something I'm just gonna give them the little pins I'm gonna give them away at my meeting um, so I've been assembly lining them and when I'm off video I'm gonna do that because I have uh, so many just base coated they're ready to go I can assembly line it I'm gonna still need one more coat on that but I'm going to go back to the other side of the nose and corner load into the primary red and go down the other side of the nose I think I had too much water on my brush don't worry about the pencil line because we're going to do line work and I'll cover it up I can put the pupils on now and get some black and I'll put his little mouth on and eyebrows you can use the Pigma pen for all the detail lines but I like to use the like I did the mouth with the with the paint but then all this on the pins they're so little that I use the Pigma so let's see but see look I did his eyebrows with paint but I did the outliney stuff with the pen I did all of them different the mustache I think I added a few pen lines but I did it with ink too with the pen this is the same guy I'm doing as right now I outlined the teeth I did the uh, outline and these little um, expression lines with the with the ink but I did the eyebrows and the mouth with paint so do what you want um, I still just gotta pop these uh, teeth up a little more. It's driving me crazy. So I start to rush. I don't want to rush. I want to be present. And you guys are so good to me because when I do these long videos, I mean, those of you who want to do it, you stay with me. But if you don't, you can click off. All right, that's good. 
I think I got a little here. Okay, so let me put the pupils on. I'm going to use a round brush. I could use a flat, actually, but I think I'm going to use a round. And this is like a number two round. Um, and I can flatten this out. So I kind of like... I have more control. And I'm going to go with... Let me follow this design. I just like her design, so I follow them. But you can put your eye... If you like a more... Um, equal you know do it do it how what makes you happy so let me put these pupils on did that make any sense you know what I mean because some of them are lopsided like see how that's lopsided I like it I think it looks cute but if it bothers you you can do your eyes any way you want I'm just sharing with you how I put the paint down um, how I load the brush so that you get your the neat a neat um, result, and even if it's not neat, it's still good. It's still yours. It's never gonna look like mine. It's gonna be yours. This is mine. It's not Renee's. I'm just using Renee's design, and I mean they're not they're not perfect. They're they're fine. I'm done. I'm putting that down. Now I'm grabbing a liner brush. A liner is just a really thin, this one happens to be by Chris Hoy. Hoy. Chris, Chris, let's see if it's, Hoy. I forget her last name, Hoy. Anyway, um, I bought this from her. It's called Chris's Epic Script Liner. This is an 18 slash zero. So there's a very few little, little hairs there, but I can use it like a pen. So I'm going to load this in black. And when you load a liner, you do want it to be more like a little, not quite a wash, but a little wetter, slicker puddle than the actual paint because it'll flow off the brush like ink. They say you want it to be like the, t the consistency of ink. So we're going to do his little mouth. Let me come up so I don't come out of the shot. <clears throat> so I like to start kind of at his cheek. Put it down, connect with the tooth, and just wiggle. And then I'll go back up to the cheek. That looks, it looks different than hers, but I don't care. It's fine. And I could put, I think I'm going to put the eyebrows. And you could either pull them this way or this way. But you don't want them to go that way. It makes them look evil. And these are not evil pumpkins. These are happy little pumpkins. Um... I'm going to do all the outlining with the pen. So I think, oh, I got a shade. One more thing. So we did both sides of the nose. Now I'm going to go under the nose with, um, instead of the red, we're going to use the Heritage Brick. So I'm going to just go, it says, uh, deepen the shading along the bottom left corner of the nose with Heritage Brick. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'm pretty sure all our shading is done. So let me just get a little Heritage Brick and the bottom left so I'm just gonna go here and I just like to pull it across the whole bottom I don't like that I have a line here but you know what I'm being picky this bothers me it's just a water line alright I think we're good I am going to be back and we're gonna do the final little details oops you know what I'm not done yet one more thing the pupils because I want these to dry. These, I'm just going to use a stylus and put little dip dots for the pupils right here and right here. And then she has one in each cheek. And I think that's it. Let me look at my other one and see what I'm missing. That's it. The next, then I'm just going to do those lines. And, and we're going to do a line around here, and we're going to outline it, or I'm sorry, not outline it, but put the gold leafing around the edge. So I'll be back to finish up, and that's it. Thanks for watching.